so many amazing, delicious things happening in there. I'm from Austin, Texas, and beef has always had a major place at our family table. From the holidays to big family gatherings, our beef recipes were always really impressive and really delicious. I hope you like this recipe as much as I do. For more recipes and stories like this one and my grilled beef empanadas, visit the Beef Loving Texans website. Now let's get cooking. Happy holidays. Welcome to chilly New York City. I am here because it's still hot. It's like in the 90s back, back home in Mazalan. Also, my house is being renovated, so I am without kitchen. So in order to make for you my incredibly delicious holiday version of a beef wellington, I have come all the way to New York City where the ovens are hot and it, the leaves are falling off the trees. In this episode, my third sweet heat holiday episode, we're gonna make a beef wellington. But I decided that instead of the traditional beef wellington, we're gonna throw in a couple of little things like some chestnuts and some dried apricots and make a little bit of a roasted cranberry sauce to go with it. So just like any party planning or holiday meal, it requires some planning. And luckily in this recipe, I have written in some do-aheads. So now we're gonna have a little magical flashback to yesterday when I did the beef reduction and stuffing. Josh, give me some effects. Welcome to yesterday. Do I look any younger? So we are going to start by making the reduction. So these are two parts of the recipe that you can do a day in advance, you can do a couple of days in advance and just make them and keep them in the fridge until you are ready to assemble. So the reduction, we are going to start by using another animal fat, which I'm super excited about. This is beef tallow. This is essentially just the rendered fat from the beef. There's so much incredible flavor in this. I highly recommend using this. It's going to give you extra delicious beefy flavor flavor. So we're going to throw in a couple of tablespoons in here. And then we are going to throw in some shallots. Let's give it some nice flavor. Some thyme and bay leaves. Some crushed garlic. Don't worry about cutting anything too fine because this is a sauce reduction. All I want to do is infuse all of these flavors into the beef broth that we're going to reduce and just cook down until it gets nice and thick and syrupy. And that's going to essentially be the sauce for the Wellington. Okay, so we're getting some nice color. And now for our pyrotechnics portion of the evening, we are going to deglaze this in a little bourbon. You can use whatever liquor you like. I happen to like bourbon. All of those really nice caramelly flavors are going to pick up the caramel flavors in the beef. I'm gonna take this off heat and then just carefully pour this in quickly. If you have a gas stove, you can just lean this over and ignite it. Otherwise, use a lighter and then just let that go. And that's gonna do a couple of things that is going to burn off the alcohol, but it is also going to char up the veg and also make everything feel nice and cozy and wintry warm. And you're gonna get a lot of really good flavor in that. And now that the flame is dyed, we're going to add in our stock. So now we're gonna bring this up to a boil, reduce it to a simmer and let it go for about 45 minutes until it's nice and thick and syrupy. And it'll probably reduce by about half. And next we're gonna be making stuffing. So now we're just gonna throw everything into the food processor. And I'm doing this in two steps because I want the mushrooms to have a slightly coarser texture than the rest of the stuff. So the rest of the stuff I want pretty nicely pulverized. So I'll pulse it to start. That is probably good because once we cook it down, the moisture will evaporate and they'll actually get smaller, these pieces. So, and you don't have to go crazy with the, the cleanup because we are gonna jump right back in. I've given these a little rough chop. We have some maitakis, shiitakes, oysters, trumpets. But again, use what looks good and use what you like. 
Okay, same thing, pulse to start. And these you can take down to pretty fine. I don't wanna make a paste necessarily. So this is the consistency that you want. It's pretty, pretty fine. And as I said, once you take the moisture out of it, it will get even smaller. Just throw it in there. All right, and now, same thing as before with the beef tallow. Mushrooms love a lot of fat, so don't be stingy. All right, and in they all go. And that's exactly what you wanna hear. You can just let these kind of hang out. There's a lot of moisture in this skillet right now, so it's gonna take a while to evaporate all of that moisture, concentrate the flavors, and give us any browning. So I'm just gonna kind of spread it out on an even layer, and I'm also going to throw in some bay leaves and strip off some of these thyme leaves. While we're evaporating all this moisture from the stuffing, we're going to salt and pepper the beef. I wanna show you what this looked like when we got it from the butcher today. So it had these little things attached to it, which obviously this is really good meat and this is a really expensive cut of meat, so I am not gonna throw these out, certainly. But it does help the cooking process if you remove them. And so what I wanted was a cut that was more uniformly the same shape. That way, all of this section of meat as it bakes will retain the same color. Obviously, if I cook this little piece for 45 minutes, it's going to get really, really tough and dry. And so this is going to go into our reduction and it's going to give a lot of flavor to the, the final sauce. And also afterwards, we can take out that beef and shred it up and make tacos, make sandwiches. It's going to be a really delicious chef snack. Okay, so now I'm going to season this. So my general rule of thumb for seasoning anything is one teaspoon or four grams of salt per pound. So this is a little under three pounds. And so I just want to make sure that I season this very well. I also think it's really important when I'm doing, when I'm cooking any bigger cut of meat, I like to season in advance. So. This is a, another do ahead. You season it very well, wrap it up, and all of the salt is going to melt and then get reabsorbed into the meat so that even the very center of the beef is going to have like perfectly delicious flavor that you can taste. And now just a little bit of pepper. It's fine if it rolls off because now we are going to just roll it up in the plastic. And then this is good for 24 hours and up to three days. This goes in the refrigerator. All right, this is looking really good. Most of the moisture has evaporated. So I'm gonna take this off the heat, let it cool down, and when it's cool enough, I will quarter it up, put it in the fridge. And then once that is fully reduced, then I will do the same there. I think I'm gonna go lay in the bath now. Welcome back to today or tomorrow or yesterday. I don't actually know. I don't know where I am. All I know is it's time to sear some beef. So I'm going to unwrap this. This has been in the fridge, I think for 24 hours. The salt is all nice and melty and the center should be nice and seasoned. I've got a very hot cast iron and that looks really, really good. Back with the beef tallow, throw that into our skillet. And immediately we see the smoking. That is a good sign. And boom. Yes. This skillet is incredibly hot, so it's only gonna take about 30 to 60 seconds per side. All I wanna do is get nice browning on the outside. The inside is gonna be completely raw, and that's exactly what you want. All right, turn that off. So now while it's still hot, we are going to brush it with some Dijon. Some recipes actually talk about doing this once the beef is cooled. 
I actually think it's better when it's still hot because I feel like the mustard kind of melts into the beef. And you can see as I'm brushing it, it's kind of changing color and then just sort of going away. And that to me suggests that it is entering the pores of the meat. We're gonna let this cool for 30 minutes and then we are going to wrap it in the mushroom filling and the crepes. All right, it's time for the rolling. Yay. So I'm gonna do something that's a little bit, a couple of things that are a little bit different than a lot of traditional recipes. A lot of recipes that I was looking at to research uh, beef wellingtons, a lot of them either used uh, um, the crepes or the uh, puff pastry, but not both. But I feel like this is a way to lock all the moisture into the center of the Wellington. One thing that I really don't like, if the mushrooms are sitting on the bottom of the pastry, what ends up happening is the bottom layer of the pastry gets really, really mushy and gross. And I like it to be really crunchy and puffy. So this step will ensure that we are getting the crust that we love. And these are just store-bought crepes. It's pretty easy to find them in the, the grocery store. If you can't, you can obviously make them. And now the other thing that I'm going to do a little bit differently than most recipes is I'm using brasaola, which is an Italian cured beef. I think, you know, in keeping with all of our delicious beefy goodness, this beef is dry. It's very, very thin. It's going to add a lot of flavor a lot of sort of wintry holiday-y notes, but also it'll add another layer of protection against moisture. All right, now we have our cooled and delicious chestnut mushroom stuffing. And so I'm just going to kind of sprinkle and layer this over top. Now we've got some beautiful dried apricots, which are not only going to give us this beautiful pop of color, but they're also going to give us a little bit of sweetness. They're gonna cut through all of the richness of the mushrooms, the beef tallow, the braciola. Okay, now we are ready to get this boy in the middle. All right. Now, using the plastic to help us, I'm going to roll, peel back some of the plastic, and then just give it a roll. We will tuck in. Don't worry if, it's, if the crepes start to come apart on you because this will obviously all get wrapped in delicious pastry. And so now, we're just going to wrap this up as tightly as possible. And, and this will rest in the fridge for 30 minutes or overnight. And then we'll be ready to put it in the pastry. All right, I have my cold puff pastry and I put a large piece of saran wrap down onto the counter. This is going to help me roll it out and wrap later. And this is a pound of puff pastry. And every brand is a little different. They're gonna be in different shapes. They're gonna be in different thicknesses. They will also even be in different weights. Some are a full pound, some are 17.5 ounces. The main thing is you just want over 16 ounces because you're going to need it. I'm just gonna carefully peel this over. Now I'm gonna take the paper off. All right. Now I'm gonna measure this so that I know how much I need to roll. Let's see where we are right now. Oh, okay, so we're at 13 and a half there and 10 and a half there. All right, so I'm gonna take this out to 15, which is the full length of this ruler, and then I'm gonna take this out to 14. Okay, got this nice and floured. I'm gonna flour my rolling pin. This is all just insurance that we're not going to have anything sticking. And then just gently roll it out. And now we're at 14. 
I'm gonna even this out a little bit and then we are ready to roll. If, if your crepe starts to tear, don't worry because we have nature's glue right here. And all you're gonna do is just give it a little touch up. And boom, just like spackle. Now. Okay, so now we are going to throw this in the freezer while we roll out the lattice. So we'll just carefully lift this guy up. And it's totally fine if you put the plastic in there as well, because we're not baking, we're just freezing. This is a lattice cutter. I am so excited. We actually went out and bought this, especially for this episode. It's super extra, it's so not necessary, but it is the holidays. And if you're gonna make a beef wellington, you might as well have it look absolutely gorgeous. So this thing is not only gonna give you extra pastry over your wellington, which who doesn't want more pastry, but also it's gonna give you this beautiful lattice shape. And you don't really have to do anything except that. So as long as you can do that, you are in business. This is second pound of puff pastry. We're not gonna use all of it. But don't worry, I'm not gonna waste it because I love pommiers. So I am going to, again, generously flour my plastic. Throw that down. See if it works. <laughs> the Wellington, please. <laughs> Just sealing it all up. The egg wash is gonna give it a really beautiful golden color. It's also going to make sure that everything sticks. Everything is gonna get puffy and golden and delicious. And if you do make a mistake, don't worry. Just take your little scraps, take some scissors, and just mend it all up. So now we're just gonna finish this off with some beautiful flaky sea salt. That will give you a nice little burst of flavor on the top. Also, it looks really beautiful. And then this is gonna go back into the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes. We want it to get firm up again. And the reason for doing that is because we're putting it in a really hot oven, but if you put it in right now, the butter is soft and it's just gonna melt. And so when you put it in the freezer, it'll hold up its shape and as soon as it hits the hot oven, you'll set the pastry and so it'll keep its shape. So that's super important. And after it comes out of the freezer, I'm going to throw it into a 425 degree oven where it will bake for about 40 to 45 minutes. I like mine on the rarer side, so I'm going to pull it then. But what you should do to find your ideal temperature is visit the Beef Loving Texans website and you will find your ideal temperature. Just remember that the temperature is going to continue to climb about 10 degrees after you pull it. So pull it 10 degrees short of your ideal temperature. Because this is a holiday dish, we are going to make some cranberry-like sauce. Um, I love this recipe because it's very easy. You can actually use this recipe as a cranberry sauce as well. You just throw a bunch of stuff in a bowl and roast it. So this is olive oil and sugar and cranberries, a little bit of salt, some rosemary, and some white wine vinegar. Now we're just going to toss this all together. Ah! and throw them all over the counter. And now just pour everything out into a baking sheet. And that's it. This will go into the oven, but first, because our wellies in there, we're gonna get that out first. Look how beautiful it looks, oh my God. 
Also, it's like super heavy, but it's beautiful. All right, so this is just gonna hang out and rest so that all those juices can sink back in. We will throw this in here, roast that. And those are gonna roast for about 20, 25 minutes until they get nice and bubbly and start to get a little bit caramelly and saucy. It's holiday feast time. I'm so excited. Can we just stop and talk about how beautiful this is? I mean, I have to say, I'm really, really proud of this thing. It's so pretty. I love this lattice. It looks so amazing. I think the most dramatic way to cut this is to actually start in the center and turn it around and show the world, show all of your guests exactly how beautiful it is in the center. And you will see a perfectly roasted piece of beef surrounded by delicious mushroom chestnut apricot stuffing. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so what you absolutely need is a very, very sharp knife. You can also use a carving fork, but I don't wanna mess up my crust because it's too perfectly beautiful for that. So I'm just going to use my hand and I'm not gonna grip it or anything. I'm just going to steady it, but it should be fine. Find your center mark and then just go in. Oh, listen to that crust. The beef is cutting like Oh my goodness. And wait for it, wait for it. Oh, perfection. Okay, so if you have friends or guests or someone close to you that needs something that's a little more well done. The smaller end is going to be where you get your more well done pieces. So you can serve them these end pieces, they will be very happy. For those that like delicious succulent and tender beef, you definitely want the center. So obviously that's what I'm going to cut for myself. I think they should be about an inch thick. So this, you know, depending on whether you're 12 or 14 inches, that will serve 12 to 14 people. I think this is a pretty, I mean, let's face it, it's a, it's gonna be a hearty meal. I am not going to pour the sauce directly over top because that would be a violation of everything that's holy and dear to my life. So we're just gonna drizzle on the side. We're going to just throw on some cranberries. Just throw them around. I feel so civilized. Beef Wellington. <laughs> so many amazing, delicious things happening in there. Firstly, if you like really amazingly delicious prime rib, this is going to make you cry. The mushrooms and the chestnut give you this like nice nuttiness. And then the apricots and the cranberries just like kind of punch you in the head and say, it's the holidays. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna stand here for another half an hour, probably eat another slice of this. It's so incredibly delicious. You have to make this. Don't wait for a holiday, make it for your birthday, make it in the middle of February, make it for yourself and eat it in the bath. It's so incredibly delicious, you are going to love it. And if you like me, if you like this recipe, if you want more sweet heat, more incredibly delicious things like this, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you can find this recipe at food52.com. Happy holidays.